Hi folks and welcome back. In this video I'm going to show a simple workflow for bringing atomic force microscopy for AFM data into Blender, apply displacement to create the 3D effect, and then apply different color maps as you might be doing using say matplotlib in Python. To follow along you'll need two additional things besides Blender. The first is Gwydion, which is a free tool for processing microscopy data, and the second is the add-on Blender color maps by the Jerem. I'll leave the download link in the description box below. So let's get started. So we'll be starting outside of Blender first using Gwydia to process our data first. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll be using this data set, uh, which is a height map of a flake of tungsten disulfide, which I got from my PhD. You can in theory use any scan data. You could use topology, you can use phase, whatever you want. But it makes sense to work with height data just because that will make the most sense to map into 3D. So this data was collected in a .ibw file format because of the instrument I use, but what we need to do is export this as an image file. So the first thing I want to do is file save as, export as a .png. After clicking save, Gwydion will pull up an additional window in which to define a bunch of parameters about the image. For the sake of importing into Blender, I do not want the ticks and tick labels on the side, as well as the color bar. So for that, I'm just going to select export as 16-bit grayscale. And with that selected, I'll press OK. So for the next step, we need to come into Blender. And the idea is that we're going to add a mesh plane, which will then deform into the topology data that we have from the AFM image. So first thing is first, we need to add a plane. So Shift A, Mesh and Plane. One thing to note here is that this mesh plane obviously has one-to-one -one width and height, but we need to modify this to make sure that it matches the width and height of the AFM data we exported earlier. For the data that I'm using today, I have a width of 512 pixels by a height of 470. So I just need to scale the height of my mesh plane to be slightly smaller than the width. To do that, I'm just going to come to the object data properties. I'll keep the X at a scale of one, which represents 512 pixels, but for the Y, I'm going to scale that down. And for that, I want 470 divided by 512 pixels. So it's slightly smaller and that gives me what I need. The next thing I'm going to do is apply that displacement. So let's come to modifiers, add modifier and look for a displacement, set the mid level to zero. And then we want to click new to add a new texture. Click this button over here or come down to the bottom for the texture tab. By default, it should start in the image or movie option, and that's exactly what we want. And so go ahead and come down to settings, open, navigate to that AFM data that you've just exported as an image and select that. Come down to the mapping section and where it says extension repeat, just make sure to set that to clip so that the texture does not repeat itself and we should be good to go. You'll currently see that nothing is happening to my plane, and that's just because we don't have enough geometry or any geometry besides the single plane to displace. So we're going to need to sort that out. But I'm just going to add a bunch of divisions manually. So press tab to come into edit mode, to edge, subdivide to create a subdivision. And then I'm going to press shift R a bunch of times, not too crazy, but maybe something like this to give myself enough geometry to work with. And already we can see that we're starting to get some of the AFM texture. I'm going to apply shade smooth. I might also add a subdivision surface modifier and place that before the displace modifier. And so that just gives me a little bit more geometry to work with for the displace. I'm going to set the levels viewport to two and keep it two for the render as well. And make sure you have simple enabled. And there we have the mesh now starting to be deformed according to the AFM height data. To change how much the height is scaled, we can just come to the strength of the displace modifier and we can toggle that. In this case, I perhaps should have denoised or removed some of the uh, outliers in the height data because I didn't. I have some very, very spiky bits, but hopefully that just gets the point across. So that's the AFM data loaded. I'm just going to come to the rendered view. And here I have a scene with just a basic HDRI and I am also working in cycles. What I want to do now is to add some color to this, where the color map actually reflects the height at each point on this 3D model. So this is where we are going to use the Blender color map add-on. Make sure that this is enabled by coming to Edit Preferences, and hopefully you've already installed it, and make sure that it is selected under Preferences add-ons. The methodology behind actually getting the color to scale with height 
is that we call a height attribute in the shader editor. So what I'm going to do now is just give myself a new window and make that the shader editor. And I'm going to press new to create a new material. Next, I'm going to add a attribute node and let's go ahead and call position. And so this position should give me coordinates for the X, Y, and Z. And here I want to take just the Z value. So I'm going to look for a separate X, Y, Z node and I'm going to use the Z position. So already if I just plug that Z value into the base color, in principle, although you can't see it very well, the height is being reflected by a grayscale color. This can be seen more readily if I apply a color ramp. And if I bring in the white values closer to the black, you can see that the, the taller parts of the image are coming across as white, so something like this. But instead of using a black and white color ramp like this, I want, say, an actual color map and so this is where we're going to use Blender Color Map. Press N, and under Tools, you should have the option Color Maps. After you've installed it for the first time, these two boxes should appear blank. You need to make sure that you click Rescan for a library of color maps. And if you have, for example, matplotlib installed already for Python, this should be automatically picked up. And so if you press Rescan, it should be able to find matplotlib, and in some cases, a bunch of other libraries as well. We're going to be using just matplotlib because these have the color maps I think we're most familiar with. And under color map, you should then be able to find all of the usual color maps that you would use for your data plots. The default in matplotlib is, I believe, Viridus. So I'm going to select Viridus. Underneath, you can control the number of steps which it'll sample this color map to create the color ramp node. So I'm going to use 10, create color map. And then we have ourselves a Viridus color map that we can use. So now let's just plug the Z height into the factor of that color ramp instead and pass that into the base color. And so in this case, the color ramp is actually difficult to see because I've got so many of these outlier data points that are extremely tall. But if I scale really, really high, although it doesn't look particularly great, you can see that that color ramp is working. If you wanted the color range to map more reasonably, you might be interested in adding a map range node. Make sure you uh, unclick clamp. And then if you bring up the two max, you can start to have the color ramp scaling a little bit more at uh, towards the lower end of the height range. Although bear in mind what you're essentially doing is you're clipping the height values that are possible. But I think a general good idea is to have the data pre-processed so you don't have all of these noisy bits of data, which you can process all in Gwydion anyway before you export out as an image. And so now that you have that ready, you can basically play around with the color using any of the color maps installed. So if I open N again to bring up the tab for the color maps, I could change Viridis to say something like Spectral, and again say Create Color Map, and that'll give me yet another color map that I can just route my connection to and pass back into the base color, and then I have an entirely different way of visualizing with color. And again, you're always free to change how much scaling you have, how exaggerated you want to make the data in the height direction by changing the strength of that displace modifier, or do, do make sure to then correspondingly toggle the two max value of the map range node. But otherwise, that is basically it for how to bring in AFM data into Blender for 3D visualization. Please give a like and a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe for more videos, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye for now.